Hi. Uh, we have been discussing the regression difference in difference method. Uh, we use the regression models to uh, estimate difference in difference methods. And as I illustrated, you can use continuous variable as and apply the same idea of difference in differences method. And another advantage of regression using regression for difference in differences method is that you may include additional covariates. Suppose that there are additional covariates. You may consider um, state level level characteristics. In this example, in, in, the, in the textbook, they have adults employment rate, adults employment rate. Here, they only consider teenagers, but, but teenagers employment rate may co-move with adults employment rate or adults uh, wages. So uh, here, simply they added uh, adults employment rate and then the regression equation becomes here. From here, it's easy to add additional variables. Um, excuse me. Let's see. X S T prime beta. You can include you can include uh, this any characteristics as just an additional covariate in the regression. It is very easy to extend. And let's see what happens. So, so you can explain, you, have, you can explain it better. Suppose that here, uh, the model two and model three, and model two and model four have additional variable change in overall employment over population, overall employment ratio. And of course, ah, I did not explain. It. So because when you set this, when you take after taking the average and first difference, you will have similar equation. You have this plus, you will have delta x as prime beta. So in here, the delta x is the change in employment rate in state S. So between 1989 or between, and between 1989 and 1990, what is the change in the adults, adults employment rate and then that would affect teenagers' wage or teenagers' employment rate. So the first two models consider wage, and the, the second, uh, the last two models consider employment rate, teen employment rate, and the second and fourth models consider uh, adults' uh, employment rate as a covariate. What you have to see here is still the same, the first coefficient, the coefficient of fraction of teenagers. What's interesting here is with or without, with or without uh, the covariate, the coefficient of fraction of teenagers, it's not much affected. It, it does not change, it's still quite similar. And also it's the, the change is pretty small. Anyhow, there it, it is insignificant and anyhow it is significant. So that shows uh, regardless of the adults employment ratio, you can, you you have uh, the minimum wage has significantly positive effects on teen wages, but little effect or insignificant effect on teenagers' employment rate. Still, your uh, your idea, your your conclusion is st still survives, and it's even stronger. It becomes more stronger. So the effect of adults' uh, employment rate is removed in your estimate. And the textbook suggests a few more additional, additional extensions. It is possible, but the author did not do that in the original paper. For example, possible extensions, like you may include like more variables such as GDP growth rate or like price, pr price inflation, uh, price index inflation rate. Uh, other things can be included here. Also what's interesting here is you may include individual level variables such as uh, race or education or gender. So 
maybe you may you your your wage when when um, if these are determinants of a wage or an employment if they can predict the employment and wage better teenagers wage and teenagers employment better then including those covariates will improve your models uh, prediction ability so it's, it'll be better also I guess you may include these variables you may assume that the effect of the minimum wage increase uh, is also proportional also to such individual variables. It will be interesting. For example, think about education. It is clear that if uh, the effect of minimum wage will be larger for those who are uh, low educated. So less educated people are more affected by the minimum wage increase. So for example, you may think why IST. So I am going to let let uh, let ZIST be uh, the education. Simply, you may consider race and gender and other individual variables in here. But let me simply consider this here. And also, I I will assume that it does not depend on time. Education it, it does not change that much over a year, so it's not a big uh, it's not a big problem. So here, alpha, uh, same, I'm going to copy this. You will have the same equations, same equation, but I would, if I were the, if, if data were available, uh, here, beta z, on other parameter, there is no more Greek letters, I, uh, comma, delta, I like, anyhow, whatever. So you can include more covariates here. And also you may include, you may include something here, delta one and delta two, Z S, Z I S, and here. So um, it will, it will, it may be more compelling, more convincing to say that uh, the the effect of minimum wage depends on depends on teenagers uh, employment rate the fraction of teenagers at the same time it in at the individual level so this is state level teenagers the fraction of teenagers is calculated at the state level but also it depends on individual education which makes sense uh, lower low educated people affected more affects affected more so it's proportional to delta two and I expect delta to be negative. The higher Z is, the higher education is, the effect will be smaller. So delta two will be smaller. And then if after taking the difference and first uh, difference, you are going to have not only delta F, but I expect um, something like this. So you may have this and if z does not depend on t it will be cancelled out by first difference so you will end up with something like this and you are going to see a better uh, if better way to estimate better, better be another variable another uh, channel that affects the wage or employment from the minimum wage increase so it will be more interesting and more compelling uh, result. Okay, this is it. It was a short video. Thank you for watching the video.